Hello and welcome to another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. My name's Bob and in this episode we're going to be building a set of two tier bookshelves that can stand alone but will be fixed to a wall. Being another woodworking project, I've set up the tent workshop in the yard. Tools included this time are the compound miter saw, the shop built router bench, the woodworking trolley and a trim router. The materials I will be using for this build is a leftover piece of 8mm or 5 16ths of an inch thick structural ply for the back and two 1.8m or 6 foot lengths of dressed all round pine board. The pine board is 235mm or 9.25 inches wide by 19mm or 3 quarters of an inch thick. I am happy to use the end of the pine boards as is, provided I've checked them for squareness first. The bookshelf will be a simple design that will be glued and screwed together. The top and bottom shelves will be 700mm long, the centre shelf 680mm long and the two ends 500mm long. Each end piece will have a through dado or housing routed across its centre into which the centre shelf will be inserted. The widths of the tops and the sides are as received, that is 235mm wide, but the centre shelf width will be cut back to 227mm. This is to enable it to match up with the half thickness rabbit or rebate that will be cut into the back side of the tops and bottoms to accommodate the plywood backing sheet. With the boards marked out I cut them to length using the compound miter saw. The compound miter saw is a bit of overkill for square cuts and a miter saw or a power saw or even a hand saw would do the job equally well. The centre shelf will be fitted into through dados running across the middle of each end. I am cutting the dado out using a trim router. To keep the router in line I have made up a simple frame jig out of scrap wood holding it in place with clamps. The dado will be 10mm deep and 20mm wide. I am using my shop made bench router to cut a 10mm wide by 8mm deep rebate or rabbit along the back side of the top and bottom and side boards. A backing board of structural ply will be recessed into this rebate. Whilst I had the bench router set up for the rebate cuts, I used it to reduce the width of the centre shelf by 8mm to match the rebates of the edge boards. The 
The rebates in the top and bottom shelves do not extend the full length of the boards and I use a chisel to square up their ends so they can accommodate the backing board. With the boards all cut to length, dados and rebates completed, I am ready to assemble the outside frame of the bookshelf. I am pre-drilling and countersinking all of my screw holes. This bookshelf will be painted and the screw heads will be covered with filler. I'm using a combination of wood screws and glue to fasten the edges together. With the outside frame of the bookshelf screwed together, I measured up and then cut out the backing board. The backing board that I am using is 8mm thick structural ply and I'm cutting it to size using my shop made track saw setup. Since making this setup, I find myself hardly ever using my table saw. Time to install the centre shell. This is also being glued and screwed in place. To prevent the glue being scraped off when the shelf is slid into the dados, I've used a spreader clamp to move the two ends a few millimetres apart. Sliding the shelf in still scrapes off some glue, but that's probably because I'm a bit free and easy with my glue application, wanting a good joint. Releasing and removing the spreader clamp, I screw the centre shelf into place. Getting ready to fit the backing sheet now, I make sure the frame is square by checking the diagonals. I then run a bead of glue around the rebates and the back of the centre shelf. I then drop the backing sheet in. Traditionally you would nail the backing sheet in, but because it is being used to attach the bookcase to the wall, I am using screws across the centre shelf and nails for the rest. I mark a line across the backing sheet corresponding to the middle of the centre shelf for the screws.
With the centre shelf screwed in place, I then use nails to complete the attachment of the backing board. Construction completed, the bookshelf is ready for paint. All done now, painted up, ready for the install. But before we get on to the install, I just want to talk quickly about fixing it to a wall, because it is in fact a wall cabinet. But being a bookshelf, once the books are in it, it's going to be quite heavy. So. There are a few considerations that you need to think about in relation to attaching it to the wall. You could put in a bracket below, angle brackets below, angle brackets above to hold it in place, but usually the same considerations apply there. The bookcase is going on to a, for want of a better word, a hollow core wall. What that is, is it's a wall that's been framed up uh, with timber, your typical thing, or it can be steel in some cases, and it's got sheeting on the outside. Now, typical sheeting used in Australia is either uh, plasterboard drywall or fibre cement sheeting. That's a, usually, um, particularly a, a thick sheeting, is usually quite robust to do attachments to. Drywall, uh, not too bad uh, in um, I guess compression but uh, not really good when you try and pull something out of it and things can pull out of it quite easily. So we've got some options so I'll talk first. This ordinary wood screw, uh, it doesn't matter probably uh, exactly what size it is. You're putting a bookcase in, don't use it. This is the sort of thing you might screw in quickly to hang a clock off or something like that. You can fit something like this, which is a, a wall plug. Screw goes into that, it expands out in the hole, so you, you drill a hole that matches the wall plug, you tap it in with a hammer, you screw in the screw, the wall plug expands and that provides your fixing. I would never recommend it for something heavy like a bookcase. Uh, works quite nicely for um, uh, pictures hanging on the wall or maybe a, a whiteboard that you want to hang on the wall, something like that. If you've got drywall uh, then something like this could have a use. So basically you need a little starter hull and I would normally myself just, um, you can just push these in or alternatively uh, I would drive a nail. If I've got uh, just a Phillips head screwdriver I might poke a hole through and that just makes it a little bit easier, a little less damage to the drywall. Got, um, this is a Phillips head if you look at that, and uh, cross head, and just go like that, connect her up, and screw it in. And it's uh, an easy job to do. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this at all for hanging a heavy bookcase. This one's a little butterfly uh, screw, I think it's called. Anyhow, the gist of it is, it has two little ears that compress in. Uh, you put in the hole in the wall, and this goes in, and then you, when you let it go on the other side, the little ears expand. You do the screw up, and that attaches it solidly in place. And it works reasonably well both on drywall and fibre cement sheeting. 
we're in the position where this one is going of of uh, knowing where the studs are and the studs are in a reasonable location for attaching the bookcase in that case you can use a wood screw this is the bugle head wood screw I'm just using it as an example this one's far too aggressive for the job we're doing here it's meant for fencing and um, retaining walls this is a more furniture friendly uh, bugle head screw the only problem with this one is that if you were say going through drywall by the time you get through the sheet it's too short so you need a longer one so you've got to think about you probably want at least the thickness of uh, the bookcase wall and the thickness of the drywall again uh, in thread that is actually going to go into the stud you could use a more aggressive wood screw like this one you know it's a wood screw because you can look there I think you can look there and you'll see a uh, cut out the only real problem with these is that sometimes they can split the wood what I'm actually going to use is an item called a coach screw this one's been set up for the install uh, with a coach screw you drill a pilot hole and the pilot hole is the internal diameter of the thread uh, I'm going to say it's six millimeters in this case this guy these studs in this building are hardwood studs and the reason I'm doing it this way is that uh, I think these bite in quite well and give you a little room for error what I find with these fellas is that sometimes they bite in a bit too well and they either split the uh, hardwood or because you're not drilling a pole hole in these it's something I should have said they will possibly split the hardwood and the other thing that can happen is they bind quite tightly and then snap off and you had a world of pain then this is a more reliable method that I've found this particular building anyhow uh, is to use the coach screws to drill a pilot hole and also lubricate the thread and I'll talk more about that when I do the install the bookcase is ready to go on the wall I come armed with uh, weapons of destruction a battery drill two drills jobber drills twist drills two sizes five millimeter six millimeter there's a slight difference in the uh, thread the internal thread diameter of the uh, coach bolts and the other tool I have is my impact driver this is um, a half inch bit that goes into the impact driver and on it is a 13 millimeter socket impact socket and this is for driving the coach bolts I find this one's a little more gentle than using say one of my uh, rattle guns and another little product called white petroleum jelly uh, sometimes in Australia you see it as um, Vaseline it's just a grease nice on your hands you know protect your lips no it's a it's a nice little grease that I use for these sort of purposes are going into hardwood studs and the issue with hardwood studs is that it's always good to use a bit of lubrication on the threads uh, to make the cut uh, because it can very easily uh, spiral itself out or just split the timber it's not like pine so going on the bit of the wall here uh, you can't see it but just out of shot is the printer I guess this is our office um, if it wasn't our office it was somebody else's office we'd probably ask the client to move the printer but uh, it's our printer so we're quite happy to uh, install it above the bookcase the bookcase itself I've um, already pre-drilled holes I know the positions on the wall
move everything into easy access. As I say, this is a one one man, one person installation. Using the pre-drilled hole in the bookcase for alignment, I then drill the pilot hole for the coach bolt. I then insert the point of the coach bolt into the hole and use the impact driver to screw it home. repeating the process for the top bolt. Bit more Vaseline. Change drills for the uh, the bigger coach bolts. These are a corner mount because that happens to be where the stud is. You don't need a lot of grease, about that mount will do. You can swing off that, no trouble at all, I'm sure. So it's up there now. It's all pretty solid. Uh, we'll do what we need to do with uh, some information that we keep in the office here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as always. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.